Hey everyone, I realized that uh, I never made a video showing me actually using the scanning electron microscope. So uh, I was actually really surprised that this thing works uh, after getting it back from Maker Fair. It took a couple of hard knocks uh, uh, during the trip. So I changed the filament and uh, tested it out and yeah, it still works. So uh, let me show you how, how I do it. So the water chiller is already running. Uh, this is just pumping some automotive antifreeze through the baffle that sits between the diffusion pump and the vacuum chamber. Uh, that just keeps diffusion pump oil from getting up into the chamber. So that's already running. The first step is to load a sample into the microscope. And today, uh, I'm gonna be looking at a small piece of copper mesh. It's a very fine screen and um, the sample goes inside here. So I already have it loaded in. So let me just uh, zoom in there so you can see it. So there's that copper mesh uh, that's sitting on the platform inside there. And, that, and that's where the sample is. Okay, so now I'm going to place the bell jar over the whole microscope. And I've got an arrow that indicates uh, where this bell jar needs to line up just so that all my alignment magnets are in the right place. This is all in the same spot, okay. And now I'm going to turn on the mechanical pump and use this little plug here to seal off my vent valve. So there's air is being pumped out of the chamber now. And on the first of the three vacuum gauges, the one that indicates the highest pressures get this copper out of the way, uh, you can see the needle starting to come down. So this will take five to ten minutes to get to a vacuum where that uh, mechanical gauge can't read anymore. So I will see you in five to ten minutes. The roughing pump has gotten most of the air out of the chamber, so now I'm going to turn on this thermocouple gauge and make sure that the pressure is low enough to start the uh, diffusion pump. Got to change that battery. Oh, come on, you can give us a reading. Well, whatever, trust me, it's low enough. It's about 300 millitor in the chamber now. So I'm going to switch on the diffusion pump and its cooling fan, and also turn on the penning gauge. Uh, it's much easier to get the penning gauge started when the pressure is still about 300 millitor, rather than try to start it after the uh, diffusion pump has done its work. So the diffusion pump will take 15 to 20 minutes so you get the chamber pressure down to operating pressure, which is about 10 to the minus four. So I'm gonna stop the video and start again in about 15 or 20 minutes. The penning gauge is now reading two times 10 to the minus four uh, millibar, which is pretty close to two times 10 to the negative four tor. So that's good enough. So I'm gonna switch this off to avoid uh, causing interference later. And let me pull the camera back. So the next step is to put the light tight shroud on the microscope. So what we're gonna be doing is light sensitive. So I'm going to put this, uh, this is coroplast, just black plastic to cover that up. And now we can start uh, switching it on. So first I'm gonna turn on the uh, high voltage supply, the main high voltage supply. And let that warm up for just a few seconds. Okay, now I'm going to switch the high voltage on. We're at about 3 kilovolts. And now I'm going to turn the filament on. Okay, good. We're registering about 50 microamps of emission current, which is good. That means that the uh, filament system is working the way it should. Uh, next, I'm going to get the photomultiplier power supply ready. This has sort of like a preheat. It's all tube-based. So turn this on first, and then there's like a relay that clicks after 30 seconds, and then we can switch the high voltage for that on. In the meantime, I'm going to turn on the scintillator voltage. Okay. <laughs> a little bit of arcing there, always a good sign. And I'm going to turn on the focus voltage. Uh, we still have 50 microamps of emission current, which is good. That means that that arcing didn't kill anything. This microscope sometimes arcs, that's just the way it is. Uh, I'm going to turn on the photomultiplier supply voltage. 
And we now have an image on the, mic on the oscilloscope. So let me turn off the room lights. And there's our metal mesh screen. So the controls on the oscilloscope, uh, I don't really need to use. I, I'm just going to turn the dials on the front of the microscope to change the scan pattern. So if I pan the scan around, you can actually move around in space inside there and get a different, different view of the screen. Uh, the, the screen itself is a really good target because it has the same pattern all over the place. So no matter where the scan hits the sample, we're bound to get a nice pattern like this. And it's also square so that, you know, if, if, if the image looks like this, I'll know that the amplification in either axis doesn't match. So I can adjust that so that we get a nice clean image. And then we can also try playing with the photomultiplier voltage to get a little bit of a better image. Maybe turn up the scintillator voltage a little. And we can adjust the gain on the photomultiplier amplifier. Oops, a little too much there. So there you have it. Oh, let's actually, let's change the zoom level. So the easiest way to change the zoom level, one, we can change the scan pattern. So by doing this, we sort of zoomed out and readjust the focus. Uh, to zoom in a little bit more, we can make the scan pattern smaller, but what we can also do is increase the acceleration voltage. And by doing that, the scan pattern becomes smaller because uh, uh, the electrons are not as easily deflected by the plate. So I'm gonna up it a couple clicks here. So we are at uh, four kilovolts now. Let's do another 500. We've got four and a half kilovolts. As you can see, it's kind of a big balancing act between getting all the knobs in just the right spot. Change the scan pattern again. So we're in pretty close now. Um, I'll do some measurements on that copper mesh screen so that we can kind of get an idea of how close we are. Let's see if I can pan around a little bit. So you can actually see the weave pattern of the mesh. So this, this wire is going on top and this wire is going underneath. So it's woven like a fabric. And there's still some residual noise in the image. There's kind of this nice wavy pattern here, but we're at pretty high magnification. Let's see if we can go a little bit higher. Up to five kilovolts acceleration now. So as you can see, that's getting near the resolution limit. I mean, we can kind of see some dark spots on the screen which indicates maybe some dirt, like oil or something that's charging up. So those weird looking areas, even though this, the screen is all metal, if there's a film of oil on the screen uh, and the oil becomes charged, uh, that means that the electron emission from that area is going to be a little bit weird. Okay, there was that arc again. As you can see, it um, temporarily causes the image to disappear, probably because the photomultiplier became saturated, but luckily it came back. <laughs> so you can get an idea of how uh, delicate and shaky operating this microscope really is. Um, it works all right. I mean, we've got an image here. Oh, let's, let's zoom back out. But as you can see, it's definitely um, interesting just for, for uh, exploring the design of, uh, of electron microscopes. I, I really don't think that this thing in its current form could be used, you know, for any actual research. But that's where you guys come in. We're going to write some documentation for this thing and maybe make another version. Okay, see you next time. Bye.